That's it. They're already playing with the information that they knew beforehand. So mm. I'm sure that Shangen, if Shangen has already lost a quick kit twice, so I'm sure he's already planning some sort of strategy. Hopefully, probably figure out what's kit's greatest asset and try to take it out as soon as possible. In my opinion, the biggest asset would be the Wimsy Pot. <laughs> I'm not I, sure. Which I believe was why Shang brought the Volcrona to try and threaten it out with the overheat as seen in the as seen in, as seen in the first turn. But then Kit turned it around with the Hydreigon switch in, which was very smart on Kit Ming's part. But yeah. that's how high <laughs> level players in Pokemon, isn't it? Exactly. Try and predict and trying to knock it out predicted and turn. Yeah, so so far for Shang side we did not see the Gotitel or the Landorus. Which makes me wonder whether he will decide to <laughs> you know keep you know the saying if if you ain't broke don't fix it. So I wonder whether Kid Ming will decide to lead with the same uh, Terra Terra Cod combo again. Well the Wimsy Cod has some beat up the Terra Cod yet. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure whether it's revealed beat up on his moveset yet. I'm well, sure. I don't think it won't beat up the Terrakin one with it revealed as Focus Stash, so... Very good point, very good point. Okay, we are into round two, ladies and gentlemen, and we see... Volcarona right, Conqueror. Actually, yeah, Shang switching it up. He still leads with Volcarona, but switches out by Sharp for the Conqueror. And Kiming also switches it up. He brings a Terrakion, but not the Whimsy Cod. He leads with Jellicent instead. Oh, this is interesting. Any any thoughts on this on this on this matchup? Well, um, you can see that bo both of Kit's Pokemon definitely threaten the the Volcarona, but at the same time you also can see that um both of Shanks Pokemon can actually, well rather Shanks Conkelder is capable of threatening both his um both Kit's uh Jellicent as well as the uh, Terrakion, especially mm. since uh I think we've seen earlier that Conkelder is more than capable of taking Terrakion's close combat, so probably can survive this turn and might be able to pick up a KO somewhere along the line. Mm, but at the same time, I think Terrakion's uh, up both outspeeds uh, the Concorder. So if he decides to go for the Rock Slide, he has the, uh, not only can he kill the Volcarona, or not kill the Volcarona because he has the Charty Berry, but he also can fish for Flinch, which I think might sway the battle in fa favor for uh, well, Kidney. yes, that's the pr that's the problem with fast rock slide users, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there is the chance to miss there too. Yeah, so. but at the same time, it's like in the beginning of the match. I'm not sure whether anybody would want to try fish for flinches at this point. They're not that desperate, right? Mm. But actually, now that I think about it, Kimmy's pretty smart to ring the Jellison because in the first match, uh, or maybe in the previous matches, he already know knew that uh, Volcrona is Chucky Berry. Therefore, he goes for the Jellison Water Spout, which, which is not, not enough not, to kill. Not, not enough, to, enough kill. to kill. Oh. And the Terrakion close combat goes on the Conqueror, which does not, not take kill. it out. Oh goodness, this, this, is, this is not take it out. Whew. This is close. And oh, Bug and Shang goes for the Bug Mask on oh. the breaks the sash. Probably going for a KO on the Terrakion. Yep, yep, yep. It lands the KO on the Terrakion. And heals back up quite comfortably, both in the yellow now. So Shang takes an early lead, uh, knocking out one of Kid Ming's mons. Shang is still in a quite... I just realized that none of Shang's Pokemon actually want to take a Water Spout. He is going to have a bit of trouble switching in. <laughs> Especially since, um, well, Mark Punch is not going to hit the Jellison, and Jellison has revealed Scarf, so it's probably going to move first. Mm, and it's an true. area attack. It's going to hit something. Yeah, I, I think not, even though Shang did manage to take out the first Pokemon, now he's being threatened by a dual KO. And... I believe if the Whimsy Cock can set up a, a Tailwind, that would even sway the battle in, even more in Kid Ming's favour. In case the Scout Terrakion comes in, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, there's really not much that Shang have on the field that can really... I mean, Touch. Water Spout is based on HP. Yes. So, in order to bring down the damage, you can uh, damage the Jellicent. But I don't see a way for for Shang to damage the Jellicent since it is Scarf and uh, Conqueror's Mark Punch can't touch ghost types. And even if... And the only thing I can think about that Shang will possibly bring in order to stop the Jellison is probably Bisharp. But even then, he can't bring his Bisharp in without taking a Water Spout. He'll mm. probably have to sacrifice one Pokemon or another. Correct. Uh, wish. So, <laughs> what does a high player level player do in a situation like this? I think it, I, I, if I was scared in this situation, I think I would have to go and switch out. I mean, I have to sack something, but the question is which one? Which one is more valuable to me in the long run? Mm. And we have to remember that, that Whimsicott is still there threatening everybody. Alright, seems like Shang favors the Volcarona. Oh, or maybe he can't protect with the Concorder since it's a Soul Vest. And as it, whoa, okay, Whimsicott goes for the Tailwind. And Mark Punch. Okay, I think what Shang is trying to do here is trying to inflict as much damage as possible before his Concorder goes down. Yep, and Jellison Water Spout goes, goes off. Spout. Which takes out the Concorder. <laughs> I, think I think Shang 
pretty smart move on Shanks part. He wants to preserve the Volcarona so that he can take out the Whimsicott. The and Whimsicott does not hit Volcarona especially hard. I think Fire resists both the Moon Blast and uh, Grass and Fire both resist the Grass step. And as, as you mentioned, uh, Wayne brings in the Bisharp. So Bisharp's Shocker Punch will be able to one-hit kill the Jellison, I believe. Now, but the problem is that Bisharp is perpetually... Uh, oh! So, kid does not, kid does not, kid does not switch out predict predicting the call and he goes for the water spell. Oh Shang does not go for the sucker punch so this is this is actually <laughs> this is actually quite bad because rage powder is gone. And so Mokrona is knocked out. And with tail win. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Moon Blast goes on to buy Sharp. Oh my goodness. That was, a, that was a beautiful uh, that was a beautiful prediction by Kid. Calling uh, Shang's bluff right off the bat. Yeah and, and not immediately knocks out both of uh, now Shang is down to one mon. Yeah, why why didn't he go for the sucker punch? Why did Shang not go for the sucker because punch? Because he, th he thought it was too obvious. Oh, so he thought that the Jellison would switch out, is it? Yes, yeah, so he tried <laughs> to go for the... I think he would have tried to go for the attack on the Whimsicott instead. Okay, I I see. So, high level players, holy shit. And oh. it's pretty much game from here. Yeah, <laughs> alright, Kimming decisively takes the second round, making him the champion for today's VGC 11 Throwback Tournament. Congratulations, Kimming. <laughs> Thing. Okay, even if not no, no. I can still, I still have one more game. Out. So quite I well played on, experience. quite well played on Shang's part. I think uh, he respected Kit Ming and uh, thought that Kit Ming would predict the Jellison switch, but which in the end costed him the match, the second round. To be fair, I think Kit also probably out predicted the Jellison switch. He enjoys doing that kind of thing. When oh, he you know, he could be like, man, if he sucker punches me, it's okay. Oh, you're the director. You will have to sash and brought him to Mark Punch Range. He's good guy. The sash already so broken. Matt, are we? The Jellicoe was more of a trend. Jellicoe was always more of the trend. Okay, and so um, that draws the conclusion for our VGC 11 throwback. It was a fascinating format in which we see plenty of whimsy cards running around for some reason. <laughs> Offensive whimsy cards. Offensive whimsy cards, which is a Definitely change from the previous VGC level where we saw plenty of support whimsy cards instead. Okay, uh, this tournament was brought to you by Team Robo. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook page there. If you're interested, video just drop games. us. Sorry. Right, Team Robo video games. Sorry, we boss. From we, from we are from Singapore. Yeah, we are Singapore brand Pokemon group. Uh, Team Robo video games. We have hosted quite a lot of events uh, for Pokemon, both officially and non-officially and actually my fellow commentator Wang yes, here has been uh, to Worlds last year previously I believe <laughs> and there was even a, there was, was even a group of our own uh, members that went for Worlds today to try to take the seniors and the masters um, even though they didn't they didn't manage to do so I think it was a very valuable experience and uh, I do believe, they did manage to meet all the big shots from the, the Pokemon I do believe one of, our, uh, one of our seniors actually did make it to um, top 18 in Worlds yeah, for the seniors division which, so. which is quite a feat considering we don't have nationals to rely on <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, check us out, Team Robo Video Games, and I am Justin, and my commentator here is Wang. See you, see you again. <laughs>